Welcome to United in Recovery. My name is Brooke and I am a child of God, a believer in Jesus Christ, who has lots of stuff in my life, but yet being God's beloved daughter is bigger than all my stuff. And that's just not for me, that's for each and every one of us. Tonight we begin a four part series about God breaking through at Christmas. Just the word Christmas at times can bring up these feelings of loss, of regret, of disappointment, of can we just skip till January? Do we really have to do the holidays? Yeah, it's part of the process. It's part of what we've got to do. It's part of what we get to do in all of our stuff, in the midst of the losses and our addictions and all of that, we get to walk through the holidays and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna focus on how God breaks through in the midst of all our stuff. And tonight we start with silence. Second week, we will focus on night. Third week, impossible. And the fourth week will be how God breaks through the chaos. When I think of silence, I honestly think of the opposite of silence. I have these memories of being told not just me, but the classes I was in, and not just because of me, to be quiet, shh, be quiet, be silent. There's that. There's also, I love, I love to hike, and the, the sound of silence at the top of a mountain is one of the most beautiful things, because there's not the noise pollution. It's this beautiful silence of God. But then there are those times in our lives where silence is deafening. It's the deafening silence that happens when we're just so numbed out by our addictions. We just don't hear anything, can't see anything. It's silent. God is silent. Even though we may pray those prayers of desperation, it feels like God is not saying anything. He's not helping as we pray those foxhole prayers. There's the silence that comes from the loss of a loved one due to death. We'll have empty chairs at our tables this holiday season. There's going to be silence in that, and it is deafening. There's the silence, or maybe we wish the silence, and the chaos that is our loved one's addiction. It's the not calling, not knowing where they are. It, it is the silence that I, we fear the call or the doorbell ringing. It's just the silence in all those situations where God seems silent. The Old and New Testament, the Bible was made up of two testaments, the Old and the New Testament. And there is 400 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. It's sometimes referred to as the silent years. It wasn't that nothing was happening those 400 years for the Israelites. It's that they just didn't hear from God. They didn't hear from God as they had through Moses and Joshua. They didn't hear from God through prophets. They just kept living their lives, and it was hard, and God was silent. And then... The first thing that happens at the beginning of the New Testament are there are four books of the Bible that are called the Gospels, and those are the four books that speak specifically to the time that Jesus was here on earth. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the stories that we know about there being no room in the inn and the shepherds, the angels coming to the shepherds or the wise men, those, those stories are found in Matthew and Luke. Mark starts not even with the birth of Jesus. And then the book of John does something different because that's kind of how the book of John is. And this is how it starts. These are the first several verses in verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory. The glory of the one and only Son. He came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's be honest. That's not the birth story that we're familiar with. 
Even if we've not really been in church, that's not the story we know of Jesus' birth, but it is so the story of God breaking through the silence. The silence of the Israelites between in those 400 years and God breaking through in our lives because God, Jesus, the word in, in that reading, the word is Jesus. Jesus has been there from the beginning, from the beginning, because Jesus and God are one and the same. It says, through him, through Jesus, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. Jesus is right there the whole time. In him, in Jesus, is life, is light that shines in the darkness, and that the word became flesh. That's what Christmas is about, is that we have a with us God, the God who came to be with us in the midst of our silence. And you see the story, the birth story of Jesus? It's not a story from a long time ago that doesn't have application. We have a living God, a living God, who breaks through our silence, who breaks through our addictions, who breaks through our grief, who breaks through our stuff. And it takes time, and it's not always the way that we think it ought to be. But we, we have a God that breaks through silence, not just at Christmas, but 365 days a year. As we go to open chair groups, as we talk to accountability partners and sponsors, take time to think about where are those places in my life where I feel like God is silent? And what would it look like for me to hear from God? And share times in your life when God has broken through the silence and what that is like. May you hear clearly tonight that God does break through the silence. One day at a time, one moment at a time. May you know that you are loved by a mighty God. Amen.